Well, aloha, good morning. Thank you so much for being here with us on Spotlight Hawaii. We are so happy to have you with us. And Ryan, this morning, we've got a very special guest. That's right. We spoke to this uh, then candidate a few weeks back. Of course, we were highlighting the election that was happening and the contenders for the race for the city and county of Honolulu and the mayor seat. Of course, we know now that we have a mayor elect. Mayor elect Rick Blangiardi actually joins us right now live in our conversation here on Spotlight Hawaii, the first time that we've had the chance to speak to him as the mayor elect. Great to see you. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Yanchi. Great to be here. This is what I get. I survived two, two ordeals with you doing. I get to have a third time. This is great. Yeah, we're really excited to begin this good discussion. Uh, let's first start off talking about this transition period for you. Of course, you've recently named who will be the managing director. You've also named those who are going to be part of your transition team and helping to uh, f- facilitate the candidates that will be in part of your cad- cabinet. Talk to us about how this transition period has been going so far as you prepare to take over on January 2nd. Well, I can tell you that this last, the last three weeks, we're one day shy of it being three weeks, has been an absolute blur. Uh, the orientation has been fast and deep. I'm very pleased, extremely proud that Mike Formby agreed to become our managing director. I had grown great respect for Mike. I'd known him, known him you know, not as well as I got to know him, let's say, in the last three or four months, but had known, known him for a number of years through my work at Hawaii News Now and different times that he'd be in our newsroom, places and opportunities to listen to him. So Mike brings a tremendous depth and breadth. Uh, look, I can talk about almost anything you want to. I think one of the things that I want to be really clear about uh, for anybody watching this is that we've held true to our statements about job one was our team and the people we would be putting together. So in the midst of doing that, we spent a lot of time setting up a, a recruiting process. Uh, we went live last week uh, with our portal, transition2021.hawaii.gov. Uh, I think it was published, published. I think we're actually taking out an ad and start advertising this week too to make sure that uh, people know about it, but I know it's been picked up. And I've been encouraged by some of the resumes we're already quickly receiving. And we're going to break that into teams. I want to do something that's really, uh, I think, unprecedented, but very fair. We've worked with the HR at the city, make sure all our protocols are in place. But, you know, we we want to encourage, uh, you know, people to apply. We have, we're going to divide that up. I think in the first and second week of December, we'll be doing two days. We have four teams of four people each. They'll be meeting and, and interviewing each candidate uh, through the course of the day. So each team will have probably, uh, we'll take it down to the three finals. They're going to do all the vetting. So we'll probably have each team will have six or seven positions to interview for. So that'll be some 2021. And then Mike and I will take over with the number one recommendations. And the number two will have the top three, but we'll see how they got ranked. So I'm excited about that. And I could talk about that, but we're really hoping. And I actually have been very surprised and very encouraged by some of the people whom I've heard from. And I think that there's a mood and an attitude that I feel, I know myself in running, that we're at this incredible place in time in Hawaii's history. And we're not alone. The rest of the country has gone through this. But there's a lot at stake. And good people, people who love this place, we share that, I think, on this island. A really incredible love of place. are wanting to perhaps come forward. And I'm, I'm encouraged by that. So that's one thing. And then the rest of it's been... How much can I learn about the rail? Get involved as a mayor elect on the rail, knowing full well that we had a whole agenda happening on rail between the mayor and the executive directors. We know it predated even before the election. <clears throat> and then the, you know, the fate, if you will, of the P3. So being asked almost the next day, the next morning after the election, as mayor elect to weigh in on the rail and, and to see if whether or not um, you know, we would have a voice on, on the future of P3 or even the voice of Andy Robbins. I opted to do a fair amount of due diligence, put an enormous amount of time and energy, talk to the FDA, talk to hot board members, talk to Caldwell, Mayor Caldwell. I talked to Andy certainly at length and so on, and then other people, uh, including our Washington contingency of elected officials. And I decided that I would stand down and let it be one mayor at a time. And I said that, but I, I w- didn't do that capriciously. I wanted to do that in fairness to Col- Mayor Caldwell uh, and quite honestly to Andy and the Hart Board because all these people were in that moment in time. So I've accepted the fact that we'll take whatever handoff. I'm certainly going to be aware. We'll take whatever handoff we're going to get come January 2nd when we get sworn in. So between the recruiting and setting everything up that we wanted to do and the team, 
the rail thing, and then on my personal orientation. Mayor Colwell has been very uh, gracious. We've now had eight hours of, I don't want to say one-on-one -on -one meetings. We've had uh, one two and a half hour meeting with his um, his team, and then we had another two and a half hour meeting, which is Gary Korakawa and Kirk. And then we had a three hour meeting last week, which just uh, well, five of us actually last week. So, well, tell us a little bit about that whole one mayor at a time as you start to look at the uh, current policies. I, I think everybody wants to know, are you going to carry on with the tier system that Mayor Caldwell has laid out or are you looking at a different COVID protocol when it comes to trying to keep infections at bay? Yeah, well, I think we want to, you know, we've said all along, the real challenge, Yanji, was going to be balancing public health and safety you know, with with starting our economy. Um, I had a very interesting, encouraging conversation with Josh Green and uh, General Hara, I mean, talking about, you know, some of the perspectives. Um, I don't think we're right there right now because I've not been in front of the medical community to get their uh, take, but uh, we'll see where we go. I mean, here we are Thanksgiving week, perhaps my favorite week of the year usually. Um, and we're being asked, you know, for our first time ever not to have Thanksgiving gatherings. In fact, I saw something really macabre somewhere where they said, if you have a Thanksgiving gathering, you might as well plan on having a Christmas funeral, you know, which I think is really bizarre. But nonetheless, um, you know, I think that's what we're up against right now is the apprehension about bringing even families together or anything more. So, you know, I think it's too soon to tell. I will tell you that the uh, tiered system um, seems to have had uh, some good effect. I think at the end of the day, we're all evolving. It feels like we've been in this thing much longer than we ever thought we would be. You know, yesterday's headlines we now see realistically because of what's happening on the mainland tourism will come back much slower. I want to continue to be careful, but I'm concerned about all the businesses that got deemed non essential and where they are right now at this moment in time, and whether or not we can at least get people back to work. I want to look at that really, you know, especially in our. We have so many smaller businesses. The bigger businesses, the ones that have been deemed essential, are doing well. But we've got a lot of small businesses that are on the brink of, if they haven't already closed, perhaps closing. I'm concerned about that because the impact on our economy is huge. You know, during this time when we've done this show, we've obviously heard from the community and, and they've spoken some in favor of the tiered system, some against. Uh, those against, of course, especially when we're in tier one, you have th those gym owners and those who like to go to the gym. Uh, they were upset because of the fact that gyms were not allowed to be opened uh, for anything indoors. We also have heard from those of the bar uh, and, and the bar industry. They continue to remain closed. How do you weigh that uh, sort of the cries of the community and, you know, their objections to some of the tier systems and the ruling and, and what th is in best public health and, and the decisions yeah. that have to be made? How are, how are you going to have to make those decisions? And, what would you take into consideration? When well, you my attitude, Ryan, to be candid with you, is it would probably be would, would to open up the bars. You know, they opened up on Kauai and on the Hawaii Island and, and certainly on Maui. And my attitude about this would be rather than the blanket approach as to whether or not we could monitor places that might have deviant behavior, if you will, or weren't prescribing or, you know, to the protocols being asked in place. I mean, I kind of want to get to a place now where I think people understand what they need to do and we're not going to have too many violators. I don't want to sound naive. There, there are already gatherings on beaches and things like that that I know that have had to be broken up. But I, um, I would, I would really be willing to take a look at you know what we could do to open up certain things. And you know, I'm actually really interested and curious to to, to look at. It. I think I take a very different approach to what's being done right now on getting our kids back to playing sports. Um, and, you know, in soccer leagues and baseball in the spring coming up and different things like that and all that that's going to take. I, I really want to put a look at that versus keeping everything shut down. At some point, we need to learn to live with this disease. And we've been living with it for a long time. And we understand that, you know, everything that we've heard and read about wearing masks and social distancing and washing our hands and not getting in big groups, I'm seeing better and better practices by people. I'm watching it. I'm out there about I'm not saying we don't have people who deviate from that, but I think at some point, I don't believe we can wait this out. I don't want to necessarily going back to the tier system, be driven by the metrics. I want to look at the science and data. And right now, you know, our, our containment of the disease here, you know, everybody wants to focus on the big number, like over the weekend, 153 cases reported on Saturday, and suddenly they talk about the 17,000 
people have had it. Why that sounds so glaring, 17,000, or even for that matter, even the death rate. But this is a, these are low percentages in comparison. And I wanna really be able to weigh that, but I also have to be able to sit down and listen to the medical community. Uh, but I'm just telling you from me and my personal bias, I think as we get ready to get into office, which is still another five or six weeks away, uh, and we'll see what, what brings it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be interested in, in, in being a little bit more aggressive, I believe, if we can. Uh, let's talk a little bit about enforcement. One of the challenges, of course, has been that HPD has issued so many of these citations and a lot of them simply just get tossed right out. Um, now it looks like HPD is scaling back because they've been spending way too much on overtime for this COVID enforcement. What do you think is a better strategy for this so that people who are clear violators don't do that, but at the same time, we're best using our resources? You know, we had uh, yeah. someone from HPD on here and they said that they had at any given time 20,000 people who they were supposed to be monitoring who are in quarantine on the island of Oahu, that's simply impossible for the for the police to do. Yeah, you know, I think um, you know the tiered system has behind it kind of a behavior modification thing, right? If we do good, we'll be rewarded, if you will, yeah, because the numbers will be down. Uh, and then the citations came out of a place of frustration because the warnings of people didn't seem to be listening. Uh, and then, you know, and, and they bring with it, you know, unenforceable circumstances, which I don't think is a good law when you have stuff like that. And then you've got even people with the possibility of having, you know, um, uh, a, uh, how do I want to say this, you know, a rap on them, you know, a, a criminal criminal uh, case. I, I think if, if we could maybe change the law, and I think we've got to go through council to do this, and we were giving it, if we were going to do people who are offending and gave them tickets, versus citations that they had to pay. It might be a more enforceable thing. I just think we gotta do, have to do a better job right now on our collective sense of, we're gonna be going into our 10th month of this. You know, we, we've gotta get on with our lives. People are gonna have to, we're gonna have to help each other. I, I, I wanna come from a place like that. I don't, I, I don't, I, I think we need to be doing more of that. And I think maybe perhaps some of that will help, and help if we're not so restrictive in closing down. And, and and getting more things to be open, you know, I, um, I'm I'm kind of a believer in that. I want to, you know. Yeah. Uh, another issue that has sort of come up and, and something that has become sort of a hot topic has been this issue of testing and a second testing for those that are entering the neighbor islands as well as entering here uh, on the island of Oahu from Trans-Pacific Travel. But what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, implementing a, perhaps a second testing that we are seeing on the neighbor islands? Uh, and is that something that you would look to try to establish as uh, a, a sort of a, a second testing for those who are entering the state? I think that uh, we want to do everything we can when it comes to safety while we're trying to be aggressive on the other side. And I've said this during the campaign, I mean, we're still learning a little bit more about uh, second testing. I, if it's cost efficient and, and, and feasible that we can do this and execute to provide, I, I will be all for anything like that that allows us to go forward. That's a lot different than, than you know, keeping bars closed, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 the things that we maybe can execute if they make some sense. And I don't know, I haven't had the latest, honestly, on the updates on the testing. I can tell you both this. I went over to Kona last weekend to visit Mitch Rop. I wanted to go meet him, the newly elected mayor, and mm -hmm. had dinner with Mitch and his wife and Billy Kanoi, which was a great experience for me. I was so happy to see Billy. It was relatively easy to travel to Kona. I got my test and, um, you know, no fun getting your, your nose you know, 15 times around, it makes your eyes water, uh, but it wasn't that brain stinger, you know, uh, but I got my QR code and you know, I got, went to the airport and I, you know, got my boarding pass and got on a plane. And when I got off in Kona, it was sort of directed, just like you're leaving the airport to pay for your parking to a person, somebody there. And, and they looked at my QR code, they saw my record, you know, that I was negative. Um, and, and, and they let me go. And that was it. And when I came home, I just, I just got my boarding pass and I thought I was gonna have to do the same thing in Honolulu. I thought, well, this was pretty easy, all things being equal other than getting the test, you know? So, but, it, and I, I would, you know, so I, I, I am all for, if we have to test, if we can't test and it's efficient and effective, I wanna be able to do that. But, you know, 
Well, what, you know, we always like to bring in uh, comments from the audience and questions. Ingrid Peterson says, we need money from Congress directly to the people and small businesses. One of the things that Mayor Caldwell had uh, in, at his, in his arsenal that you won't have, uh, at least to start, is CARES money. Right. Um, so what are we looking at in terms of the budget? I know that um, presumably at some point in January, there will be a second CARES Act fund, you know, money coming down the pike, but that could take a while. It could have strings attached. So in the meantime, uh, what are you looking at when it comes to the budget? Yeah, well, we just finished a one hour budget meeting and I probably could still be there and be there for the next three days straight. This is going to be a big challenge. You know, admittedly, you know, it's still not determined whether or not the CARES Act money that is currently in place that we were granted is going to be extended or has to be used up by year year end. And then will there be a second? Uh, I think we need more money to go along with what Ingrid just said. I've said this to Brian Schatz, Maisie Hirono, Senator Ono, Senator Schatz, Kai Kaheli and Ed Case, all of the, everything everybody's aware. I certainly as a mayor prepared to try to get more. We're going to have to need that. Uh, we're absolutely going to need more money than what we currently have. So I think the challenge right now, even in talking to the governor, is to try to get as much money in the hands of people as we possibly can, because there are restrictions on how it can be used and people really need the money. But we're going to need more money beyond that. I think that's what we're going to have to hope for. And, and I, I would tell you, I, I'm not going to look the other way on that. I mean, from a budget standpoint, you know, since you're asking me, you know, we're going to look at the budget as aggressively as possible. The things you can do, things you can't do. I've said from day one, I don't want to put anybody on the street. I'm not a fan of doing furloughs. Uh, if we can possibly avoid it, I want to try to keep things intact. Clearly, we want to keep our core services together. I want to be sensitive to our first responders, but all of that. I mean, but we've got to also recognize the fact that um, we're in a we're we're in a place we've never been before. So. I want to get better orientation to what's been done in anticipation, what possibly could be done. You know, it's a big budget, it, you know, it, and, and, and so there may be room in there. And how can we get through this managing a budget with the least amount of impact on people and services is going to be the real art form. And honestly, I just this morning, one hour before I got here with you, was given a set of numbers that nobody had shown me until now. So I will tell you, if you would just bear with me, give us a chance. Mike was with me, Mike for me, to start to really get oriented here on this. But clearly, um, there's got to be a way. There's always a way. It, we may have to do belt tightening. I said that all along. I, I disagree with my opponent about we had carryover and everything was going to be good. I think one of the good news things I heard this morning is that people have been paying their property taxes which is a good thing because that is the biggest source of revenue for the city. And they seem to be on schedule with that. So uh, we'll see. But the other shoe drops in February will barely be there. I mean, these are, these are, it's, it is about money. It's about money per Ingrid getting it in the hands of people. And it's also about the revenue that comes into the city and how do we operate the city and how do we figure that out? It's going to be a huge challenge. Well, we know that you will not be the newest, uh, the only new member to uh, take up seat in Honolulu Hale. A lot of new members on the council will be sworn into office as well. Uh, what is your thoughts working with the council? You know, a, a lot of new faces. Have you had a chance to speak to any of the council members? Because we know, uh, as as watching in previous administrations, the the relationship between the council and the mayor's office obviously is very important. Uh, what are your thoughts moving forward in working with the council and those new members that are coming on board? Great question, Ryan. You know, I'm really excited to meet with the council. I've talked to uh, a number of them uh, individually. There's one or two I've not spoken to yet. Calvin Say, well, I don't want to say this is self like self aggrandizement, but Saturday morning we were giving out food at a Korean church, and Calvin was with me and had a good chance to talk to Calvin. I've known him for many, many years, but I've talked with Tommy Waters. I've talked. I've talked with Carol. Fukunaga, I've talked with Heidi Sumiyoshi, Andrea Tupola. Um, gee, I'm trying to think, I've, even Brendan Elefante I've spoken to. So I, I think, you know, I'm not through everybody. I'm looking forward to now in the next couple of weeks, um, really reaching out. I want to meet with them individually at first. I, I'm excited about it. I've certainly have talked to Augie, by the way. I left to Augie up. And, um, you know, we even talked to Willis Sparrow actually after he lost, uh, just to get a perspective from him. Uh, so, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we are, I, I want us to be in a place where we're not playing politics, where, you know, even the business or how things might have been done yesterday is all bygone era. This is a new beginning, five new council members at an unprecedented time 
uh, you know, in our history with so much at stake, as I said at the opening today, I'm really looking forward to problem solving and not playing politics. You know, you've asked me some tough questions today that I wish I had specific answers, and I will as soon as we're ready. But these are the things we need to focus on. The council's got to be resolved right now. While well, you understand that people represent their areas and the districts and they have issues, but we've got to work for, in terms of the greater good and smart. We're going to need buy-in on some of the big decisions, perhaps unprecedented decisions that we'll need council approval on that will be absolutely necessary for us as a city and county going forward at this point in time. I'm looking for that kind of collaboration. Uh, one of the things that you're going to have to work on, of course, is the homeless issue. Uh, Dominic says, how about fix the homeless situation? Wahiwa around Lake Wilson is bad. So are some North Shore areas. Uh, you know, I live right in town and there's a lot of areas around here also that you just see um, a lot of people who are chronically homeless and obviously need some mental health intervention. You made headlines uh, not too long ago by saying that you're not going to continue with the sweep. So what what is the strategy there? Well, I think that, you know, in the beginning, you know, nothing happens on a dime, right? You know, so we're going to, because of what's required to go through this, um, clearly, uh, at, at picking up a lot of stuff, you know, and whatever. What I've said all along those compassionate disruption wasn't working, it was evidenced. We have now even growing homeless numbers. You know, we don't have a point in time count, but it's over the last eight years, that point in time count has been relatively flat, which I've said repeatedly, I don't believe in. Have a meeting tomorrow with Connie Mitchell at IHS. We're starting to put that together. I've certainly talked to the police department. Uh, and again, it goes back to the budget, but I, I want to take a big bite out of homelessness. It's something we have to pay attention and address, address especially our chronic homeless. So, um, uh, you know, and I think that number is much bigger than it's ever been reported, but I still think it's a scalable problem. It's going to be a question we put where we put our resources. So I, I made a promise to myself. Uh, and, and to the people who voted for us, that homelessness would be a top of mind subject and not anything we're going to kick down the road along with DPP. So uh, we're going to go right at it. We're starting to have those meetings right now. You know, and, and it's, uh, you know, I, I've said all along that um, I was frustrated for a lot of years working extensively with homeless service providers, using every resource we had in Hawaii News Now to educate the public. We worked in partnership with the Star Advertiser. I just had dinner with Dennis Saturday night. We talked about all the things that we tried to do. The fact of the matter is, despite the leverage we had as media organizations, no matter how much we cared in our own personal selves, we never had the authority to really make a difference. This is about having the authority now. And I promise you, it's gonna be a top of mind situation for me because I think, it just says a lot about who we are as a people, but who we are as a leadership in our government on how we treat this and what we've been doing doesn't work. You know, I wanted to sort of, before we run out of time here, kind of revisit the rail because it is such oh, a, a big yeah. issue. They told me we for three hours. They said, this is it. Yeah, lunch, yeah we wish. Lunch with Yanji and, and Ryan. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, the rail could take up three hours. We know that. So we'll try to condense that into a quick soundbite here. Next question. You guys are talking, I'm three weeks elected, Massive orientation, five weeks out from even getting in, of which I can promise you the next five weeks are planned just like the last three weeks. I mean, it's day and night, seven days a week. So I, I just want to say I'd like to even be more specific than I'm trying to be here, but it's premature for that kind of specificity. Just, I just want to put that out there to anybody watching this because my style is we've been elected to come in, make decisions, and make things happen. So, uh, you know, that's where we are right now. Yeah, we yeah. certainly understand that. Uh, but, but getting back to this, this question on rail, I know that you said that you're sort of going to wait until that time for you to come in to take over and, and make those decisions that need to be made about rail moving forward. Uh, just your overall thoughts, because we know that this was a part of the campaign uh, about the middle street, about extending it into the, the urban core. Uh, what are just sort of, again, going through that process right now and, and looking yeah. at what you know now, what would be your preference in terms of the future of rail and where it ends up? Is that something that you can sort of comment on at this point in time? Uh, I as, think, as that was something that was going back and forth during the election. Yeah, you know, Ryan, and I said all along that I had always been a proponent of the rail project through its entirety, including all of all of the stations and the Pearl Highlands parking lot and all of that as a 21st century public works project. You know, no, that was all before this COVID hit us and all the other things. So now, you know, after two years in the making, we don't have a P3 and all that would come with the P3. So now I'm, you're gonna be curious and it looks like we'll probably have even a change in leadership 
you know, in who's running hard and who's going to get selected and what is that plan and where is that money going to come from? There are federal sources that can help us. There's, you know, there's insurance programs or whatever, but that's going to have to be the first reality check is, you know, how much money do we have and how far can we go? Look, you all saw it. It got published the other day. You know, it's uh, 2033 completion. That's a 20 from the first time they put a shovel in the ground in 2010. They're now saying a 2033. I mean, there's so much to get your head around in that regard. So what is it going to take? Is it going to take four years to get through the Dillingham Carter, which is absolutely essential on that whole TLD? And what's going to happen with the utilities? You know, how many more years? Um, th this is a big this is a big deal here. And, and, and so, you know, I think we try to make it as good as we possibly can, take it as far as we can. What that means as of today, I don't know. These are major preemptions here. You got yet again, likely change in leadership and a direction and, and a whole different strategy because you don't have a P3. And now the other thing that's hanging in the balance, and quite honestly, the thing I've been the most concerned about is whether the FTA will extend that $250 million, which they've already done once. And as Jane Williams from the FTA made it really clear to me, she's the administrator, she's the number one person, and she'll be leaving office while they'd like to help Hawaii. And they're really sensitive. They don't want a black eye on their watch either because they have invested $800 million into this project. And they'd like to see it come to fruition. These are not only inordinate delays, but you've got other cities right now coveting that kind of money with a lot of leverage. They're going to make a lot of noise at the FTA in a changing of the guard. So we're at risk right now. So to your question, Ryan, you know, what happens if we don't get the 250 extended? You know, what does that mean? So that's the kind of reality we're walking into. So it's going to be about what can we afford and we'll make those decisions, not about where it stops, what can we afford, and can we somehow keep finding a way to keep going? That's going to be the challenge. I know when you were on uh, before, you said that one of the things that people don't necessarily know about you is that you like to do the whole Thanksgiving uh, turkey to stuffing, everything in between. Uh, tell us a little bit about your plans this year and, and what you're suggesting. I know that you're not in office quite yet, but what is your recommendation to people as they uh, you know head into the holidays? You know, I liked doing that because it was always a gather, gathering, right? And boy, if ever there was a year for me to feel thankful, what an extraordinary year of my life in the midst of this crazy year we've all shared together, this whole privilege of being elected mayor and the incredible journey that we went on just to go to get elected, the campaign itself, right? But, you know, I can tell you I'm not going to do that this year at home. Uh, we can't have people over. So Karen, my wife, and my son, Ryan, the three of us are going to have dinner. We made a reservation at the Kahala Hotel for Thanksgiving, just the three of us. Um, and I'm missing that as well as a lot of other families are going to miss that. So we're not going to do that this year. This has been, this is a really strange, really strange time for all of us. But ordinarily, I would have liked to have done that. But that's crazy, right? <laughs> as, it is, I, as it is, I gained 20 pounds of my COVID-20. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so the last thing I do is cook this huge dinner that just keep eating it out of compulsion because, you know, I love the food, number one, but you feel we made all this food, who's going to eat it, you know? <laughs> you know, as we sort of wrap up here, we just want to get your final thoughts as you move into this new role and your message for those who may have supported you and maybe who those who have not, and maybe who supported your opponent. What would be your message and the takeaway here is, as we sort of head to the end of 2020 and, and your time as mayor that is coming up next year? Well, thank you, Ryan, for that question, because it is a time of Thanksgiving. It is a time to say thank you. Thank you to the people who voted for me and supported our campaign. We had some people just just demonstrate incredible generosity of spirit and time and effort. I was humbled by it. So I certainly to all of those people, and I've tried to do it as many different ways as possible to say thank you. I want to extend those thanks. And to the people who didn't vote, we are all one Ohana. And my goal and hope would be that maybe – not too many months in office that people will sit back and say, you know what? I like this guy. In fact, I read an editorial the other day. Somebody wrote a letter to the editor and said, if I had known he was going to appoint Formby, I would have, I would have voted for him. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So on the road ahead, in a place we all love, in a time that we've been the most challenged, you know, let's be grateful for all the good things we have in each other. Let's no, let's recognize the fact that our resiliency and our grit is being untested like ever before. And my hope not just for me, but the men and women I'm going to surround myself with, that we do a really 
good job, righteous job by the people of our island and get us to, to work our way into the future and get out of this. So I thank you all. And thank you for this opportunity, Yanji and Ryan. Thank you. Well, we are always so happy to see you. So thank you so much, Mayor-elect Rick Blangiardi. We hope to talk to you very soon again, uh, perhaps sometime in January when you've taken the helm and you can share more details. Yeah, we want to. I, and look, I look forward to. I look forward to being challenged that way. Let me just say that, okay? I'm not looking to be evasive. I just want to be as honest as I can be. And as somebody who's always operated and been a problem solver, I know where I am right now in that stage. So I, I was glad to do this interview. Hoping to disappoint anybody by not having enough specifics. We will get there. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Aloha. Mahalo. Thanks, everyone. Well, great to hear from him. And interesting, you know, we did hear some pretty big differences, even though, you know, he is uh, close to the vest on what he can share and what he can't share because he is just getting all of that information right now. But um, you do see some daylight between the current mayor's policy when it comes to the tiered system and what the mayor elect seems to be planning. Uh, he doesn't want to share full details, but it does sound like he is looking at a more flexible system, especially when it comes to small businesses, um, while still trying to maintain public health. That's right, acknowledging the fact that the tier system has helped, but the fact that there are also people who are suffering uh, in small businesses, he's definitely looking for ways, he's saying to try to find ways that we can sort of incorporate some flexibility, as you said, Yanji, into some of those tier systems to allow some of these businesses to be able to operate uh, safely and he said that he will be re reevaluating that, which includes uh, the opening of bars, potentially uh, team sports for, uh, you know, children that we know has been another cry from the community uh, to allow. So we'll see what happens again. He does not take office until January 2nd, but certainly a lot of, will be required of him leading up to that to sort of get up to speed with some of the decisions and why they were made the way that they have been under the current administration. Right, and one of the big decisions he, of course, is dealing with right now is staffing. And of course, he did hire Mike Formby. That was a big headline, but he's got dozens of other positions to fill. Uh, right there in the comments, we did put a link to more information about how you can apply uh, because they are accepting resumes right now and they want all the best and brightest of the city to help because 2021 is going to be a tough year, hopefully not as tough as this one, but to get us, at, you know, to climb out of this hole, we're gonna need a lot of people on board. And so they're trying to get uh, the best people to, to come join the administration. Yeah, and he's already said that he has been meeting, of course, with uh, Mayor Caldwell to ha handle some of the transition things, but he's also meeting with other officials. Uh, one of those officials, of course, is Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, who was on the show on Friday. He will actually be on the show again later this week to sort of talk about uh, some of the new updates that are happening, uh, but we look forward to having that conversation as well. That's right. And joining us on Wednesday is Anne Pereira Estaquio. She, of course, is the head of Department of Labor and Industrial Relations. That is the office that handles unemployment benefits. She is always a guest that takes a lot of questions. And what's great about her is that she will walk us through actual solutions. Uh, we know that a lot of you are facing the end of your unemployment benefits and how do you apply for the extensions and what resources are out there. So she'll be answering all of those questions. So if you or someone you know is facing some challenges when it comes to unemployment, please do uh, join us for that conversation. Also, the CARES Act money runs out at the end of the year. That means the call center that she has right now and a lot of the help she has with adjudicators going through the cases that are being challenged will probably be going away. So we'll be talking to her about resources for her office and what that means for the community and the people who are receiving unemployment benefits. That's why I always look forward to talking to her. So please make sure you tune in on Wednesday again at 1030 for that interview. And again, uh, we want to wish everyone as we sort of head on into this Thanksgiving holidays to remember to stay safe. And uh, we will see you right back here on Wednesday at 1030 here on Spotlight Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha.